Hi everyone, this is Andrew Hoffman. For those of you that are new to my channel, I'm a software engineer, a security researcher, and a technical author based out of the Pacific Northwest. My videos are typically on topics that I find interesting, and as of recently, that's been topics regarding cybersecurity, in particular application security, which is what I do as a profession. And I've also been doing some topics like game development, things that I find fun and dabble with as a hobby. So today I wanted to create a Godot tutorial and I wanted to show you Godot 4 prior to it being released and walk you through some of the differences that you'll experience when transitioning from Godot 3 to Godot 4. So on the right hand side right here you can see that I have Godot 3.42 stable so this is a stable version 3.42 of Godot 3 and on the left hand side I have Godot 4.0 Alpha 7 this is the official Alpha 7 release the latest Alpha release that you can get access to you have to get it off of GitHub so right off the bat when we look at these two side by side we'll notice there's been a little bit of a color palette change you'll note that there are some darker tones in the user interface for Godot 4 versus Godot 3 I don't have much of an opinion on that change but the one thing that I did find was convenient is when you open up Godot version 4.0 you'll notice that you don't have to open a terminal in the background in the same way you do when you open Godot 3. So it makes it a little bit more simple just dealing with your game engine and not having to worry about a background process that you have to keep open. The process is still there, it's just invisible, there's no longer a terminal spawned when you open the game engine. So let's create a new project on both. Here I'm going to create a project called GD4. And the first thing that you'll notice here, and I'll actually go over here and see if I can start a new project on 3 as well. You'll notice on 4 we have different renderer options. In fact, we have the renderer option Vulkan Clustered and Vulkan Mobile whereas traditionally we have the OpenGL ES 3.0 renderer options. There's this uh, meta-analysis of studies that came out regarding the efficiency of Vulkan versus OpenGL ES, and basically what it said is that Vulkan is significantly more performant when it comes to rendering and uses significantly less energy. Right here it's saying 24% less energy because it does a more effective job at leveraging multi-threading and parallel execution. So this Vulkan can render at a much higher frame rate than OpenGL ES, aka what we see right here as uh, GLES. So it can render at much higher frame rate when it reaches full capability. Meanwhile, writing efficient Vulkan code is not trivial and the performance energy gains are negligible for light workloads, but the trade-off comes when optimizing verse Vulkan code manually you get potential performance or energy efficiency benefits. So I think in summary the idea by the Godot team was it's possible to crank out some more performance and you know save on some electricity by switching from OpenGL to Vulkan. And in Godot 4 you see the result of that change where Godot 4 is fully powered by Vulkan. Now, down here, you'll notice another new option. We have the capacity to introduce version control into our Godot project by default. And this is really cool because right now, what you have to do is you have to manually version control all of your files and directories outside of the engine. You don't have to do that anymore. So let's create and edit these two games. Now, when we open up the game in both uh, Godot 4 and Godot 3. We can see a couple more changes to the user interface if we look carefully. First thing you'll notice is yes the, the color difference between 3 and 4. There's actually a significant amount of color difference and you'll see it all throughout the application. You'll also see that there is some very vibrant colors in the new iconography up here. But beyond that there's not a lot of change in the actual content of the base UI, which is probably good. Main difference you'll see is the replication tab down here, which is a new feature that enters Godot version 4. 
So let's create a 2D scene in both of these just so we can start writing some scripts. Because a lot of the changes between these two actually occur inside of the scripting APIs versus inside of the engine itself. So we'll go new script here and we'll create a new script here. Now as we right click on the file directory inside of the left hand file system pane you'll notice that in the Godot 3 we have our traditional set of options but in Godot 4 we actually have a couple more options for rapid creation of resources. So here it says we can create resources. We can also create text files. And these, this is kind of a welcome change, in particular the resource, because historically, if you wanted to create a resource, you have to go through a complicated user interface flow, which I believe goes through the right-hand side in either like Node or Inspector. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, but now, in Godot 4, you can just create resources right from your right click menu and it should simplify a lot of workflows for a number of people. But like I said, the scripting API seems to have some of the most amount of changes. So let's dig into a script here. Now there's a little bit of change to the boilerplate code but nothing substantial. You'll see just basically that the physics process is uncommented by default, which makes sense because that's probably going to be one of the things you're most likely going to use. But functionality wise, the default script is the same. So let's talk about some of the renames. Now, if we go to the, the Godot4 game on the left hand side and we try to extend spatial, you notice it doesn't exist or perhaps it does but it's going to when we try to run this it's going to be marked as deprecated so if we if we go here again and we look for spatial you won't be able to find it same thing when we look for camera now you see camera 2d but the base camera doesn't exist anymore what I found is let's see we go for a remote transform yeah so remote transform no longer exists either and my conclusion is all of these things have had 3D appended to the end of them or been fully renamed. So area is now area 3D, area 2D is unchanged, area is now, has now become area 3D. Let me just show you an example right here. In Godot 2, 3D objects are simply called, for example, area, kinematic body, camera, spatial. And now these are all either getting renamed or having a 3D appended after them for more consistency in the API. And the same thing applies when you try to extend and use these in your script. These objects have a totally different class name and as a result you're going to have to rename some of your scripts if you're doing a 3D game in the Godot engine. Here's another example over here. As you'll see we have spatial right here and this is in Godot 3, but if we look for spatial, we can't find it in Godot 4 because it's now been renamed to Node 3D. Likewise, in Godot 4, camera 3D versus camera. So all this consistency, I think, is very welcome. It makes it very clear to tell if you're touching an API that is designed for 2D or an API that is designed for 3D. Whereas previously, you might see area and expect that you can apply that to a 2D game. So another cool functionality that's been implemented in Godot version 4 is this concept of await. Await is something that you'll find in other scripting languages, for example JavaScript, and it allows you to more easily handle asynchronous operations. So imagine we have a function, we'll call it get user input. Inside of this function, we can add an await and we can say dollar sign UI dot get input and then return for example print got input. Well this simple function right here takes and handles asynchrony very in a very simple way. You can see when this function is called this block right here, await, is going to say 
$UI.getInput, which is going to refer to a node called $UI and a property on that node called getInput. And when this returns true, then it will return this print statement, got input, but it will not return the print statement until the await block line four returns true. In other words, it will pause script execution in this script until the await condition is met and then it will continue forwards. Now traditionally in Godot, you'd have to do something like implement a timer or implement a clock and then on an interval check to see if this condition was met but this is just a very clean way of handling asynchronous operations and it's going to be used particularly often in your user interface. So let's talk about another cool thing that's been introduced in Godot 4. So Godot 4 has had a problem with namespace pollution. And you can see that in this proposal right here. And the idea is that some users thought there was far too many top level namespaces that were being taken for the engine and it was going to start to get to the point where it would make it difficult to program and you probably noticed this before there's a lot of keywords you can't use for example test in Godot so when you're trying to name your variables occasionally you'll get some errors that you didn't expect so this proposal suggests switching some of these variables to annotations which will start with the at sign and then be followed by an identifier. And by using things like the at sign, for example, on ready, you clean up a lot of the namespace and you make it so you have less namespace collision that's unexpected. Example of this is you could do uh, on ready, or you could do at export. And now that these are held under the annotation namespace, we no longer have to worry about having a collision because we use the name icon for our icon. So that is a positive change for programming in that you'll run into less unexpected errors. Another very welcome change is in regards to the search functionality. If you're in a large Godot project in version 3.4.2 stable, and you try to do a global search, which is control and then shift and then F, and you won't be able to see it in this application. But for those of you that have worked on very large applications, you'll know that the search is actually exceedingly slow. So there's been significant performance improvements to the search in Godot version 4.0. You can also see that when we go to project settings, there's a significant amount of new options in Godot 4 including this XR tab, which allows you to configure some additional rendering functionality that's not available in the current rendering setup for Godot version 3. Beyond that, you can go to rendering tab itself and note that there is a couple different options, but neither of them correspond with what you found in the rendering tab in version 3. In fact, these are more specific to Vulkan and the way in which textures are loaded. Now I don't know if I can find it inside of the project settings. However, an additional change when we're talking about rendering is that uh, 16x MSAA has been removed and 8x MSAA is now the highest option. And the reason that was cited for this was that there were a number of driver bugs on 16x MSAA as well as performance issues and you can see that in this github PR right here where it says in the master branch 16x MSAA caused an entire system to freeze on NVIDIA GPUs this likely is caused by graphics drivers not actually implementing 16x but instead combining 8x with 2x SSAA so uh, there's a number of comments that you can find throughout GitHub that point towards the idea that the 16x MSAA was unstable so it's probably better that in the meantime this has been removed for Godot version 4 so that users don't end up accidentally using this system and causing their games to crash on certain computers. Now if we're talking about changes that we can see right away if we create a 2D scene 
in Godot version 3 and 4, and we right click, you notice that we have a node called Tool Button. And this node right here does basically the same exact thing as Button. Now, just for the sake of simplification, this entire API has been removed in Godot version 4. And you'll just have to use the traditional button API as there is no reason in having duplication. So one more small change that I'm just going to write on the screen instead of taking the time to display is that the shader extension has been renamed to GD Shader to prevent conflicts with other programs that make use of the dot shader extension. So that's a good change. Another welcome benefit is that GDScript now has integration tests. So as you're writing code, you can now make use of these integration test suites that come native to Godot. It says pick a type of test you'd like to write, create a new GDScript file under the modules GDScript tests scripts directory, and then write a little bit of GDScript code as long as it has a test function that takes no arguments. And you can create your own test conditions. If you return true, you're good. If you return false, it'll consider it a failure. And you can see output files whenever you build your game to see the success rate of your new tests. You can also run them, it says, by using this command right here. Volumetric fog has also been added to the game engine so that you can create more realistic 3D experiences. You'll note right here that this was not previously possible and it was a significantly sized commit and the volumetric fog is based off of the description of volumetric fog in this PDF right here which you can look up. It is called SIGGRAPH2014 Naturally Digital Vancouver and it discusses various ways of efficiently doing atmospheric fog. In particular, I think this is in regards to Ubisoft games. So it was from a presentation done, I believe, by Ubisoft or in regards to an implementation on an Ubisoft game. Oh, here's an Ubisoft logo. Yes. So Ubisoft Montreal. And in particular, in regards to Assassin's Creed 4's implementation. 2D lighting also now comes with a directional 2D lighting node which is very interesting and allows for some very cool lighting that would be more akin to what you'd expect in a 3D space. There is now the option for DTLS encryption in the UDP and ENET networking. There is a new node and system called navigation server which should allow you to very easily implement navigation in comparison to Godot version 3. This includes a number of things but most importantly it seems it allows you to create a navigation agent node that will navigate a map node more easily. So you define a map, you attach a navigation agent to an NPC and then depending on the configuration of the navigation agent you can have your NPC navigate a map using a variety of different algorithms and you can see this being used right here. And that's it for today. I hope you liked my overview. Now this isn't a comprehensive overview Godot 4 has been in development for actually several years now, so there's an enormous amount of differences that I have documented between the two different game engines, and I will try to produce more videos in the future to talk about particular changes that I think will be substantial, and if that's something that you're interested in learning about, make sure to subscribe to this channel, but before you do that, check out my content and just make sure everything else you'd find appealing. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and have a great day.